How to invest in rare earth elements. The rare earth elements, known as REEs, the sector could become one of the most sought after, highly competitive marketplaces in the world. So why are rare earths so important? Rare earth elements provide the building blocks to produce the best magnets in the world. When you think magnets, you likely think of the one on your fridge that hold up your kids' or grandkids' pictures and artwork. Those aren't the magnets I'm talking about. The most important type of magnet is called a permanent magnet. There are permanent magnets in your cell phone and in MRI machines. There are about 920 pounds of permanent magnets in an F-35 jet. Most importantly, rare earth elements are crucial to two major differentiators moving forward, wind turbines and electric vehicles. Because of their incredible magnetic properties, permanent magnets are replacing the gearbox for direct drive wind turbines. In electric vehicles, permanent magnets act as the drive unit and provide the torque and precision required for the electric motor. In other words, if nations want to go green, they must have rare earth elements. It's not just the United States that is trying to go green. So is Europe, believe it or not, so is China, and so are many other developing nations. Both direct drive wind turbines and electric vehicle motors require a permanent magnet called neodymium iron boron, the chemical compound NDFEB. The element that is most crucial is neodymium, which is the magnet is on its own compound called neodymium praseodymium oxide. Yeah, it's kind of confusing to say all those big words. Don't worry about it. The average electric vehicle's motor requires one kilo, that's about 2.2 pounds, of neodymium praseodymium oxide. Each direct drive wind turbine requires about 200 kilograms. That's over 440 pounds of the same neodymium praseodymium oxide material. Direct drive wind turbines are forecast to account for 30% of connected onshore wind turbines. At this point, direct drive turbines using permanent magnets are not economic for offshore turbines due to weight issues. So I am not including any offshore growth in the forecast. The next chart shows a projected demand for neodymium praseodymium oxide. You'll see that the current production of that tongue twisting compound is approximately equal to the current consumption. There's a balanced market. But looking at the chart, you should be wondering, wow, there's huge growth in the consumption or the demand in the future, but there's no current growth. Well, let's look into that further. Investing in rare earth elements, a word of caution. There are many of these types of charts for niche metals and rare earths are a niche metal the very small sector, so where demand is projected to outstrip supply five times over. Whenever you see a chart like that, you need to ask questions. These types of investments look great on paper, but in reality, many of these scenarios never occurs because of substitution. Cobalt is an excellent example. It's a metal that improves the conductivity and chargeability of the lithium ion battery. I alerted my readers to cobalt several years ago before it took off. But then the issue arose that there was a limited supply outside of the DRC. It was too expensive and too risky to bet the global EV revolution on a tiny AK-47 nation. Outside of Russia or the DRC, there is no real mine that could provide offtake to the EV industry currently. Within two years, Scientists have discovered that by increasing the nickel in the battery, manufacturers could achieve the same positive outcomes on chargeability and conductivity. Now, there would be weight issues to deal with, but in short, cobalt was also substitutable. The Elon Musk effect on rare earth elements. When Elon Musk said Tesla was trying to remove cobalt entirely out of the supply chain, I took that as a huge red flag. I alerted readers that well in advance of mainstream investors who likely got caught with their pants down. I do not see this type of situation playing out with permanent magnets. Neodymium magnets have the highest magnetic force among all magnets in the world. In addition, they offer excellent heat resistance and resistance to demagnetization. 
Toyota has done deep dives on removing some neodymium from permanent magnets and substituting it with lanthanum and cerium, two cheaper rare earth metals than neodymium. The swap resulted in lower performance and higher deterioration of the magnets. Another sign we are on the right path is that Tesla has actually moved to the permanent magnet motor, substituting away from an induction motor. Elon Musk has continually been ahead of the curve. There is no reason to think otherwise here with the motor change. Today, every single major car manufacturer is now using a permanent magnet setup with the neodymium praseodymium oxide compound. The next chart you're looking at shows the difference in battery chemistry across car manufacturers compared to unanimous decision for motor technology and critical motor materials meaning there's been no set in stone method for the batteries, meaning there'll be substitutions. But when it comes to the motor technology and critical motor materials, all of the car manufacturers are going the same way, permanent magnet. The supply of rare earth ores and finished goods is perhaps the least transparent segment of the commodity space. China controls nearly the entire vertical and keeps it highly secretive. There are no future exchanges for rare earths, and there are very few publicly traded companies. China is the largest producer of rare earth metals, both at mining level and at refining product level. It accounts for 60% of mined output, 85% of the refining output, and 90% of the manufacturing. The next chart you're looking at shows the mined output of rare earth elements by country. You can see that China is the big red line that makes up over 60% of the rare earth production. Now, the United States is at 12%, Myanmar at 10, Australia just under 10 at 9, Brazil with 5, and then a clump of other nations make up about 4%. Now, those who are familiar with the rare earth market will say that the United States doesn't produce any rare earth material. We import it all. That statement is sort of correct. The U.S. does produce a very basic rare earth concentrate. The problem is that this very basic concentrate is not useful for anything. It must be further refined into oxides or alloys, neither of which can be done on American soil. So it all gets sent to China, which refines the concentrate and sells the finished product back to the United States. The next chart shows the United States imports by source country for rare earth compounds and elements. So you can see that 80% of the U.S. imports come from China. Malaysia makes up about 3%, Japan 3%, Estonia, yes, a former Soviet Republic, makes up 6%, and a bunch of other nations make up 8%. The point I'm trying to make is the United States does depend on China for its rare earths. Unquestionably, rare earths are already a matter of national security for the United States. The issue becomes an order of magnitude greater if Trump or Biden push for made in America electric vehicles and wind turbines. Think about it. The United States already imports 100% of finished rare earth alloys and oxides, 80% of that from China. If America wants to ramp up production of EVs, the electric vehicles, and wind turbines domestically, the surge in demand for rare earths will be enormous. Or as Trump would say, huge. And yes, if you have questioned yourself by this point, can the U.S. even be capable of mining rare earths? The answer is yes, but you need time and capital. And if you include positive swap line nations, the answer is a definite yes. Can you position yourself to profit from a surge in rare earth demand? You better believe you can. I've alerted my subscribers at the Katusa Resource Opportunities to a rare earth stock with world-class assets a plethora of catalysts coming up, and a key list of financial backers. It's a company I want to own in my own portfolio, and the price is just about ripe for this alligator. You can get all the details in my latest issue with a full breakdown and analysis. Until then, stay safe and well.